All right, folks, we're back at it. The Sean Walker Show here, Allen Basketball. Uh, got two wins to talk about today. <laughs> But we on the right track here with Allen basketball. We got my man, my brother, Coach Sean Walker. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Doing well, man. I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Enjoying this chilly weather in Boston, man. <laughs> it's a little cold up here. But... I got you. I know that's right. Boston up there, up there is always cold. They're brisk coming off that water. You got that right. You got that right, man. You know what? It's, I will tell you, I tried some clam chowder. It don't agree with it don't agree with me, brother. I said I got to take my food from, from down south, man. No, that clam that clam chowder get some clam chowder and lobster and all that up there. So that's that's good eating, man. That's good eating. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, man, let me tell you, man. Uh, you know, you had to play some teams back to back in a real short time, kind of like an NBA schedule would do, man. Uh, and with Waters, you know, you had them at home. Uh, talked on that game day. You got that got the team got out to a lead. They get made a run. Held the lead, you know, beat, beat, beat about 12 points. So, uh, about that first game of LWARS at home, man, uh, and how happy you were to see defense, especially on, on, on that night. Yeah, well, we hang our hats on the defensive end in the first half. Uh, we really did a good job against Edward Waters, I thought. Uh, you know, we, just, we, 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 we stifled them a little bit, played a little zone. <clears throat> um, they were probably a little surprised we played as much zone against them as, as we did. Uh, they're an extremely talented team, really tough. Uh, they come at you 100 miles an hour. And um, so we did a good job. We did a pretty good job of, of, of defending them. Um, we've been caught in a, in a rut of fouling excessively, and we fouled excessively that night as well. But uh, overall, that was, a, that was a great win uh, by a very tough team, very well-coached team. Um, and, you know, we've seen the play, play very well at home. Yeah, you know what, you know what son, I know, I know you look at the numbers. I know. 32% overall shooting, but I know you, you want to be under 40. So 32% overall, which means that zone was making them take jump shots and force them in, in uncomfortable positions to take shots they don't really want to take. So I know that's something that you really was happy about, keeping on that percentage that game for sure. Well, the mechanism for us to win, obviously, again, is, is to defend and defend at a high rate. <clears throat> you know, I, I've said before, I think you need to be in the top three categories in both aspects of offense and defense to be a championship level team. We're right there in defense. We're we're a decimal so point away from being the number one defensive team in, in, in the league by percentage. Uh, so when people shoot under 40 percent from the field against us, we have a, an enormous t a chance to win. That does happen most nights. Um, and uh, of course, against Edward Waters, we were able to. To 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 complete that task as well, and McAdoo that game had sixteen rebounds. I know you, I know rebounding some. You talked about with your team a lot, and, and he gets sixteen of them rebounds that game, thirteen points, man. But them rebounds really made you happy. Probably could have more in your opinion. I probably you know, uh, uh, Tariq is a superstar in his role. All right, we we basically need him to make layups and, and go to the glass. Um, and and when he's when he's done, he's a really really smart player. He's he, he, most of the time he's in the right place, and so that contributes to him being able to rebound the basketball. Uh, he he had a, he had an enormous game that night with 13 points and 16 rebounds. Uh, and he you know we talked after the game, um, he, you know players like him are important to to winning efforts uh, because they just do their job and do it every possession. No doubt, and Malik Lacewell hit six threes that game, but which I'm shooting that basketball good that night. You know that made you happy too. Him knocking down six threes of his twenty of his twenty one points he had. Yeah, well, he 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 has he's he's been sleep on us for a couple of nights prior to that. He made his first couple shots and came to the bench and said, "You know, I'm back." So, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is this is a group. If you take a look at our statistics, our overall stats. We truly play by committee. We don't have a guy averaging 10 points a game. We got one guy averaging 9.3, one guy averaging 9.1, two guys averaging eight. Tariq's averaging six, another guy averaging seven, you know, and, and, and on down from there. Uh, so uh, that's a that's a guilty pleasure, so to speak. We don't have a superstar, um, but we have some very, very viable pieces that will, when they band together and connect, uh, are, are dangerous, could be a dangerous group. And Sean, you traveled down to Duval County and played them played at their place. And I know what you got to be, you got to probably as well, is that you forced 24 turnovers on the road, but you had 18 of your own. 
which left them get the score and stay in the game when they shot the, they shot 50, 50 over 50 percent from the from the field, but they only won by six because they turnovers. But if we cut the turnovers down on the Allen side, <laughs> the game was different. Well, what what we won't see in the stats there as well is we missed probably about five or six uncontested layups. Um, we the turnovers that we made were just awful turnovers. And Edward Waters, you know, they they come at you 100 miles an hour. Like right? they trapped all over the floor. They put a lot of pressure on us. Um, there were times that we didn't handle that as well, but we couldn't. We didn't stop them. Uh, we we had a very difficult time uh, defending them. Obviously, they shot 52 percent from the field. As, as we just talked about, we're, we're not going to win a game that teams are shooting that that to that level of percentage. And, you know, seemingly when we didn't throw it away, we gave them a second chance at the basket, all right? We had a situation where we rebounded the ball, bobbled the ball, saved it inbounds underneath their basket, threw it inbounds directly to them, and they laid it up, all right? So those are those are mental errors as well as um, turning the ball over. Now, we, we, we're turning the ball, basketball over. JR at an alarming rate. Over the last four games, we've had 127 turnovers. All right. And and the, you know, that's that's enough for 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 any dead man to turn over in his grave. All right. And we've talked about it. I think we threw the ball away against Savannah State the other night close to 27 times. Um, so we have a very difficult time with that. And, and we do take it away some. Um, but our games are all close because we're we're grabbing the ball and not shooting it. I'm not having a chance to shoot. Our, our field goal percentage, we're shooting about 44% from the field, which is not bad. We're holding people under 40, 30, th- almost 38.7% from the field. That's that's enormous. But when you turn the ball over 20, 25 times a game, you know, it's 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 hard to win. We're blessed to be able to be in a game when you, when you turn the ball over at that rate. Yeah, because that's that's potentially 75 points you give it up on 25 no turnovers. Like, and if you don't turn it, like, the ball is so precious. Like, if you just keep the ball away from them, when they, it's like, I know it sounds, we, you know, I both know it sounds so but it's like, come on, <laughs> we just take care of the ball. We, we win so a lot more games. Yeah, well, things, you no know, defense travels, taking care of the ball, passing, passing the basketball effectively travels, making free throws travel. We're having problems with that at the end of the game some. Um you know, just, 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 just decision making. That'll travel from gym to gym. Um, we're, we're, we're not. We're, when we've got, we still got some improvement to do. We've got, I get what five games left, six games left, whatever it is. And uh, you know, we're still going into practice every day, practicing uh, fundamental things, just like it would be the first week of practice. <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that we can. Uh, I'll continue to get better at that aspect, but right, you know we're we're at the bottom of the league in in in, uh, in 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 that ball handling, ball safety category, which we call turnovers, um, and that that's not a that's not a good place to be uh, on a night to night basis. And it's been on stage, man, uh, Sean. Like you guys had a twelve four run, started 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 just the second half. You know they you know they, they they get back up on you but in the end you know you play with some boys to get that last bucket you know to get them in overtime there so uh talk about the young men uh handling adversity of being down the road getting up coming back <coughs> and actually you know getting to play with some boys and, and getting done in overtime down there it's in, in, at, at savannah state there yeah well, well let me say first let's backtrack and talk about having to play ever waters back to back uh like we played them on wednesday Traveled on Friday, played them again on Saturday, lost a six-point game. That's like the NBA. That's like playing playing the team the same, playing the team back to back to back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm not in, uh, not in favor of that. And if you take a look at the scores in this league, um, our women beat Edward Waters' women at home by about thirty, and went to Edward Waters and lost two days later by twenty. So, well, maybe not been that much, but I, what, what was it? it was a it was a lopsided game, and all, all over the league, that's kind of what happened. So, we ran into a juggernaut on Saturday and lost, and now we go to Savannah State um, with a, a, a stream of tough opponent. Now, I'll tell you, Edward Waters and Savannah are probably two of the teams that would give us the most trouble because they come and trap every possession. All right, they trap every possession. So, some of those turnovers are also about them running two people at the ball. Um, 
Savannah was a tough game. It was a physical game. Um, we threw the ball away 27 times, I believe. I know it was over 25. I think it was 27 times to yep. our calculation. And they, they threw the ball yep. away. I got it right to 27. 27 yep. times. And they threw the ball away uh, some as well. They took double the shots that we took, but the shots that we took you know, went in and they shot a low percentage from the field and we didn't rebound the ball. Um, so that was a grudge match and we could have won the game in regulation. We threw the ball away a couple of times, didn't make free throws coming down the stretch. Then we were down with 12 seconds on the clock. Um, had an opportunity to, to my, the smallest guy on the floor, rebounded, stuck it back. And then we went into overtime and we shot two for seven from the free throw line or three for seven from the free throw line in overtime. Um, so we're very blessed to win. Um, you know, that's a tough team. I hope we don't have to see Savannah state again this year, <laughs> but, um, that's a very, very tough team and a very tough road win. Uh, we, we've only won three times on the road this year. We've only lost once at home and we know that good teams have to be able to win wherever they play. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, great respect for Savannah state. They, they were 10 and one just coming off of a win versus Benedict who beat them. Wednesday night by 30, they come back and beat Benedict on Saturday, you know, by, by 10 or so, whatever the case may be. That 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 game where you have to match and go back to back is a extremely, extremely tough game for the, in this league. Especially when they kind of figure out your calls too, kind of know what's coming and like, because I'm pretty sure somebody's on the bench charting whatever you say, where y'all chart the face. It's like, yeah, like, it just, becomes a war of attrition then, even more. No question. It's just a tough game, man. I, I, I feel like, you know, I don't know. We go we, we go to our end-of-the-year meetings. I feel like we need to probably change. I don't know if that mechanism is the right mechanism for college basketball. Um, I'll make the rules as above my, my pay grade, but that is a very, very, very tough way to play, to finish, to see, finish a game on Wednesday. You're basically going to have a day off on Thursday. Travel on Friday, play the same team again on Saturday. Um, yeah, that was a rough stretch yeah, for all y'all. Yeah, like playing yeah, Saturday, yeah, Saturday, yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. y'all, y'all not geared for that. Yeah, and 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 then then you know just the idea of just playing the same team back. Almost everybody in the league on both sides that won on Wednesday lost on Saturday. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. not everybody did, but almost. Um, everybody who won Wednesday lost Saturday, and so that's just a tough. That's just a tough game, and I mean you got to play wherever you go. And the schedule is the schedule, but that's that's a enormous tough game, and it teaches your kids, you know, focus and poise, but it also teaches them the importance of you know taking care of business at home because road games are very very difficult to win. No, bro. In the NBA, we call those a, ske- a schedule loss. Yeah, yeah look, that's look, right. Look at, look at the schedule. We already know you're gonna lose. Like we that's look at the right. schedule, we know you're gonna lose. Like yeah. example, we play at home in Atlanta and go play at Houston. Right. That's two and a half hour flight after right. a game at home. Right. <laughs> you you kind of know in your head you're gonna lose that game the next night. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a tough. I, I I can only imagine what that's like. Um, and, and I say I say I actually use that scenario to our players and say. You guys say you want to play in the league. You want to you want to have a chance to play. It's not about getting paid and get, not about when people in the stands. It's about all those things that happen after the game's over and before the game and all the responsibilities that you actually have. And uh, you know it's not quite that bad. We we we, we took the bus to Jacksonville, checked in the hotel and went and practice and eat in the hotel and all that good stuff. But the game has to be played, and no matter who you're playing, you have to get ready for them. And uh, if you don't get ready, you're not ready for the game, you're not going to win. Yeah, imagine this one, too. This is going to blow your mind, too, Sean. You don't like this. Dallas Mavericks had to play at Atlanta, right? Next night, I'm about to back to play in Denver. Play where? In Denver. Oh, in the altitude. So you leave Atlanta, which is kind of in a level, level. Right. you know, normal, on a back to back to be in Denver, two, two, two. Two time zones away now. Right. In between the rule this year, so you can now travel two time zones on, on back to back now, not not one. Right. So they didn't mount time zone. They went from Atlanta to Denver. You, you can only imagine they got blown out right. by thirty. Right. At Denver on back to back. Right. That's 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 tough. But 
that, that's what I that's what I say, man. You know, you you they play eighty plus games. We play we play twenty six, twenty eight games, and those that, that tra- travel is is difficult. That's how you know. I always say to my coaching boys, we always know when we're tired. We always know when our kids are tired because we're tired. All right, when we when I as the coach get tired, I know what my players feel like. So that's 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 kind of the way it goes. And you're coming back to Georgia again this weekend, you got a uh, Albany State of Fort Valley. Um, I know you played two tough games with, with Montez and Coach Gale. I don't know you seen those teams on the film, and uh, you just saw them pretty much too. <laughs> right. Go want some revenge, so you man. Like, it's like they throw them right at you. All the people you just played again. Yeah, well, we're coming down the back stretch of the year now. At least we haven't seen them in a couple of weeks, but. You know, it's going to be a dog fight going down into Georgia. Obviously, it's my first time going into either one of these places. I, I played at Fort Valley before some years ago. But uh, these are two important games. I mean, everybody is trying to 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 tussle and bustle themselves into a position for tournament placement. Um, and so these, you know, we're, we're, we're categorizing these games as, as, as games that we have to really, really, really be focused to try to win. It's going to be a tough environment. Um, uh, all, all of us, Albany, um, Allen, Fort Valley, we're all trying to, you know, grind it, grind it back into this season out. And so uh, uh, I'm not going to say I'm looking forward to going down there, but, you know, it's coming. We're going to travel tomorrow and try to get ready. And uh, so, we, you know, we, we're going to try to do the best we can and not turn the ball over so much and try to get a shot at the basket and take care of the ball and try to defend and stay in front of them, which is going to be a very difficult task. And it's senior day in both places too. It's senior day at Fort Valley and it all day. So you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't have to tell me that, man. You could have left. You could have left that part out. <laughs> <laughs> could have left that part out. That's like that's that, that that's like uh, being scheduled for homecoming on uh in football. You know, so every game's every game's hard for us either way. So it, it, it really doesn't even matter. We haven't played a game this year that whether we whether we even won big. Which we haven't done much. That wasn't a that wasn't a very difficult game to play. So, winning co- winning college basketball game, winning one game is is is, is hard. And uh, so we just got to go down here and see what we can do. No doubt, we'll get back at it on Tuesday, man. Uh, I know it's a book trip after leaving Fort Valley. That's about four hours for you, you know. But yeah. uh, but now nah, we'll get back at it on Tuesday, man. Hope we have a good a good report for it for the people who support Allen and I say what. Congrats on getting his wins, man. You know, you when you come in year one, a tough task. You've already got 12 wins, my brother. So you're doing a hell of a job, man. They went well, winning, they went winning before you, you got there like this. Well, I appreciate it. We got to, our next task is to try to get into teens. So we gotta we gotta move from 12 to something team. And um can't get to some team until we get to 13. So you know we need to work on one game at a time and seeing what we can do to Hopefully, get Albany and, and, and Fort Valley. No doubt, folks. The Sean Walker Show. Catch up with us next week covering Allen basketball. We out.